Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today I'm bringing you a review for the new Masters of the Universe Masterverse Revelation Merman. This new figure represents Merman post the time skip that takes place at the end of Episode 1. And as such, looks a bit different from your standard Merman. The biggest difference being that he's missing an eyeball, which he lost in battle to our heroes in the past. So if you're expecting a large update to the classic Merman design, that's not what we have here. This is, you know, kind of a Merman 2.0, as they would say in the McFarlane world. That being said, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Merman's packaging, then we'll open it up. We'll get a good look at Merman and his posability, his different accessories. Now I'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Merman comes in your standard Masterverse packaging. You see the Masterverse logo up top. And because this is a character based in Revelation, you get the Master of the Universe Revelation logo here. You get his name, you get a little Netflix call out. And then we see the figure right in the middle. And you can see this is a bare chested Merman, no chest armor included, missing his eye. And he's got a whole bunch of battle scars and stuff on him. He's also got a sword, though it doesn't look anything like the classic sword. So I don't know if it's supposed to be the same thing or just a different sword. He's also got this little two-pronged spear right here. I don't know. What would you call that? It's not a trident, obviously. Is it a, a dident? A bident? I don't know. <laughs> it's a spear. So I'm going for a harpoon, maybe. And then he has two additional sets of hands. So that's where they really put this guy's budget was, you know, extra hands and his weapons. Now, personally, what I would have liked to have seen was if they had optional parts that allowed you to switch him back and forth between this newer version of Merman and the classic one. And all that would have taken was a swappable head and some chest armor. And then the rest of the differences, like his skirt area and his boots and all that, would just be due to artistic interpretation. But they didn't go that route. They decided to put all the budget into things like hands and stuff instead, which, not my choice could add two figures in one, a lot like what they did with his wave mates here, specifically the new Eternia figures. But for whatever reason, they decided to go all in on this new design. All right, so if we turn his package to this side, we just get his name and his title of Ocean Warlord. And we turn it this way, we get a really cool shot of Merman underwater. And I think this is really, really well done. You can see the water like reflecting off his skin. You see some fish in the background. You see this really cool coral reef-like area down here. Very nice bit of artwork. And then here we get this other artwork of Merman bursting out of the ocean with, I'm presuming, his own Kraken-like minion. He's got his pirate sword looking blade right here. Looks very, very angry. And as usual with this Motu stuff, it's a great piece of artwork. Right here we get his name and title again, and then we get his flavor text. And that reads, the undersea overlord of a lost kingdom allied himself to Skeletor out of necessity, not out of respect. With the Lord of Destruction gone from the face of Eternia, this treacherous trout retreated to the Crystal Sea and his army of Aquaticans. Good or evil, all who sail Eternia's waters do so at their own risk. So it's a very wordy way of saying that Merman struck it out on his own after Skeletor disappeared, and now he just attacks everyone indiscriminately. Which, between the flashback they show in his premiere episode and then the real-time appearance of Merman, it really fits the bill. He really is just kind of this rogue pirate-like character now. And they really play that up with the, you know, the one eye and the cutlass-like sword that he's got there. All right, so the box art and everything looks really nice. I, re I really like that one. I love the colors on it. Uh, the figure, you know, looks nice inside the box, but now we want to experience the figure out of the box. Now we have the figure cut loose from the packaging. We see all of his accessories laid out. We get his sword, we get his harpoon, and then we get the two closed fists and the two open hands, which predominantly show off his webbed fingers, something the original toy didn't have because it was mostly just a head swap of Skeletor. So they've done a lot to try to differentiate him from Skeletor. They've also made some moves to differentiate him from the character who he used to share a head mold with, and that was Stinkor. So let's go ahead and pull him in here. So you can see his head is very reminiscent of the old design, but it's got specific details that differ from Stinkor's, whereas Stinkor's classic head was reinterpreted to, you know, be very furry and look more like an actual skunk. He has more aquatic features where, you know, he's got the webbed ears and everything, kind of scalier textures around the eyes, 
It's got these um, like almost like jowls, like you see something on a Gruber. So they made sure to make him look pretty distinct from the others. As far as most of his body, most of it is just your standard, you know, humanoid He-Man build. They did give him smaller biceps, something I noticed. He's a little slimmer in this region, which does make his shoulders look almost a little too big for the rest of his arms, because these are the same shoulders that he used with the big old massive like He-Man biceps. They also gave him unique forearms, where his bracers are actually molded into the arm, so it's not a separate piece. And then he gets his own belt and little, you know, loincloth or skirt section, which for him looks like it's made out of some kind of a seaweed. So very, very fitting. The leg parts are just reused from your standard, you know, He-Man and Skeletor. Then these shin guards or boots are all new pieces meant to be very decorative and meant to stand out very specifically from the old Skeletor boots. But then the one detail they did retain from Skeletor was the feet. He uses the same three-toed feet that our Revelation Skeletor uses. So not the new Eternia one, but the Revelation one. So that's one way they just decided to, I guess, keep him the same in that design. Because the original toys for both Merman and Skeletor rocked these uh, leather-like three-toed boots, or three-clawed boots. And in Revelation, they just translated that into actual feet with three claws. So that's the route they went for him, and it looks fine. Maybe it would have been better if like, his feet had webbing on them, like the hands. Probably would have made more sense. But they've already done a fair amount of work on him, so I'm pretty satisfied with what we get here. He's also got these really great, you know, scar or cut details all over his body. Something I really dig. My copy does have this unfortunate mold flash under this arm, which leads to this, like, whitened plastic area that you... I don't know if you can actually even get rid of that. Well, look, he's got scars on his back, too. He also gets gills on his shoulders right here, and then these dorsal fin-looking uh, things on his back. So I do take it back. His chest area is new, too. Said it was a He-Man one, but it's not. It is actually unique to him. I think the tor the ab section is the same. But yeah, this is all new. It's got new sculpting. So, I mean, they really went out of their way to, you know, kind of make this guy stand out and be unique. Which could be the reason why he doesn't actually get, like, the head swap or the chest armor. They may have just blown a lot of his budget on giving him new parts. Which, I mean, if that's the case, you know, a little more forgiving of it. He is a lot more unique than I thought he was at first glance. And he makes for a very good looking toy. And he is certainly more interesting looking than the original, which we'll get to here shortly. Alright, so to check out his posability, he has your double ball jointed neck. Got universal shoulders, bicep swivel, double bend elbows. Oh, that one's tight. I always got that one joint, right? It's always the one. <laughs> you get the universal wrists. It's got the ball joint in the upper torso, full waist swivel. Universal hips, which luckily can get some range on him because it's a very soft little seaweed skirt he's got going on here. Can't go forward too far, but outward's pretty good. Got a thigh swivel, double bend knees, a boot swivel, and then ankle rock and rotation. So really everything you'd expect from a Masterverse toy, all your standard articulation points. And he just looks good. You know, he's a little more slim than your He-Man Skeletor, but kind of makes sense, right? He's supposed to be this agile swimmer that's supposed to be able to kind of glide through the water so him being a little on the leaner side really works in his favor now of course he comes with these two weapons here so we can give him his sword in one hand and this kind of slides in at the thinnest point between the thumb and the index finger so we can hold it like that and then it's a spear which you just want to push in through the top and now he looks ready for combat he looks ready to you know board somebody's vessel and take him hostage or Heck, maybe even kill everyone on board. He's a pretty ruthless guy. And I really like the weapons. I love the very intricate looking blade he has on the sword here. Like, not very practical, but it looks super cool. Definitely, you know, a fantasy weapon. And then even his spear or harpoon looks really nice with the two prongs. And then you got this cool, like, copper-like coil going on the, the head of it here. It looks good. Like, they made a lot of changes to the design, but it really works because he looks like a king now, right? He looks like, you know, the king of the Aquaticans, and that's very fitting for him. Now, the last thing we should look at is the alternate hands. So we'll go ahead and pop these off. Just kind of keep the weapons aside with them. Do that. We get our closed fists, which you can use any combination of one or both. 
fuck somebody, you know? They look pretty good. They do hide the fact that he has webbed hands because his fingers are all tightly closed together. So if you really want to show off his aquatic nature, you can give him these open hands, which I think are really cool and really help set him apart from the old toy and from Skeletor, because the old toy, again, just had Skeletor hands. Look at those, huh? I just get slapped with those. Boom! Knock your face off. <laughs> so the open hands, I, I think, are some of my favorites. Obviously, they can't hold anything, so I probably won't be using them on my shelf. I tend to uh, display my characters holding their weapons. But they are a really nice alternative, and if I wasn't going all in on the weapon holding hands, I would totally use these, because they just really help set them apart from other figures. And here, of course, is a comparison shot with the vintage or Origins version of Merman. This is specifically the version that has his more, you know, classic retail appearance. There was that Lords of Power one, but he has such a different look to him that I decided not to include him here. Because this guy right here is where the evolution really comes from. So you can see, you know, what we talked about with the face, how... You know, his face is a little more ambiguous here on the old toy about what it's supposed to be. And they designed it that way on purpose to where it can work for, you know, multiple different characters. That's how they were able to give it to Merman, but also Stinkor at the same time, despite the fact that one is like a fish and one is a furry animal. You can also kind of see the basis for his design. He does have a green belt, which you can kind of barely see under his chest armor, and uh, orange woolies or an orange loincloth. They decided to translate that into a more ornate belt, and then these long seaweed-like skirt flaps there. He does get a sword, though it's markedly different from the new one. Yeah, this was supposed to be this old, like, barnacle-encrusted sword. I do find it weird they didn't go with that. As much as I like the sword design, this thing is kind of Merman's signature weapon, so to not have that does seem like an odd choice. All right, then we get to the boots, which at first glance look very, very different from each other, but you can also see where the inspiration comes from. The old Skeletor-style boots, you know, rise up right here in the center of the shin, to a point, they retranslated that as having these like knee guard type uh, additions here. They went and recolored it gold just to match the rest of his armor. Speaking of armor, he actually gets you know bracers now instead of just being bare armed, which is another way to help set him apart from Skeletor. And then these are those three clawed boots I mentioned that got translated into actual three clawed feet. So there are some intentional differences made where they seem to just kind of come from out of nowhere. And then there's certain other things that you can see where they came from. They might be a little different, but they look more like a logical conclusion born from, you know, the fact that they reuse mold so much than just changes for changes sake. And I would say that for the most part, it's all for the better. I think this new Merman looks a lot better than the old design. Uh, the old Merman toy was really not one of my favorites. Uh, between just the shades of color they use for them, like that obnoxious green against this very pale yellow, the very generic boring face, and the fact that he's a mostly colorless body devil of Skeletor made him really not stand out to me compared to some other figures. That's why I really do prefer his Lords of Power version that they released in Wave uh, 5, I believe it was. So yeah, I think this is a definite glow up. Now, am I disappointed that they didn't give him the chest armor and a head without the missing eye? I am. It might even be unreasonable for me to expect that, given how much, uh, you know, new tooling and accessories and stuff come with this guy. But it definitely would have made him far better, because you could have had, you know, this version of our man, who looks like he's seen some rough days, or he could have something that looks more similar to the classic version. Like, yeah, he'd still have the scars on his body, but that's a pretty minor detail. And really, who's to say the scars weren't already there? It's not like these toys were known for excessive paintwork. I mean, his boots are the same color as his skin here. So yeah, definite glow up. The classic design obviously has its place within the Motu lore and the fandom, but this is just a much cooler looking figure. Plus, his existence doesn't negate the possibility of them eventually doing a classic Merman, or very likely at this point, maybe a new Eternia Merman, which will, you know, be some new or interesting take on the character. Might even be the Lords of Power design, just updated in the Masterverse aesthetic. And, you know, could have swappable parts to make them look more like the vintage design. So, you know, there's still possibilities out there. And this completes our look at the new Revelation Merman. I'll admit, this is the figure I was probably least excited for in this fourth wave, at least, you know, in the core assortment. 
uh, just because I was kind of put off by the fact that he doesn't have his classic armor and all that. But actually getting to handle him and check him out, he's not a bad figure at all. He's actually quite nice. Uh, I may even like him more than the Tila, as badly as I wanted a proper classic Tila. He just is a very, very cool figure. And even our, you know, classic update to the Tila toy wasn't anything mind-blowing. You know, maybe preferable to the Wave 2 Tila, but still nothing that, you know, I, I was just enamored with. This guy, however, is just incredibly cool looking. Like, yeah, he may not be the classic design, but for what he is, he just reeks of awesomeness. So, you know, I, I guess I kind of personally rate him somewhere, you know, between Tila and the new Eternia figures, because I do absolutely love that new He-Man and Skeletor. I love what they did. I love these, you know, these old concept designs that they brought to life, and the fact that you can convert them into the classic ones, which is something that this guy is unfortunately lacking. So I think that does just knock him down, you know, a small peg there. Uh, but he is still really great, and if you were kind of holding off on him or you were kind of uh, apathetic toward picking him up, I think you should maybe take another look because he is a cool character. He's a cool figure. He's got tons of sculpted detail that I didn't even realize that he had. Like, I thought he was mostly a head swap with some new clothes, but he's not. He's got a lot of new pieces on him, and I have to say I'm very grateful for that. I, I think it made him a very interesting and just really... <sighs> I don't know how to put it. Worthwhile figure, I suppose. Uh, and then, you know, like I said earlier, his existence does not negate the possibility of us getting a more familiar merman down the line. So there's nothing wrong with picking him up if you just want kind of a fresher take on his design. Plus the whole like pirate buccaneer aesthetic just really works for him. So I like it. And I think if you manage to track down a copy of this toy, you probably will too course that is just how I feel about this merman so now I want to know what you all think of this toy can you see yourself picking this up do you mind the fact that it's a new design vice the old one or do you maybe like it for that or do you not want this either you know you only want the vintage looks or you feel this guy is maybe too bare bones not enough accessories or just some other reason you don't want to pick it up any and all feedback is always welcome in that comment section if you enjoyed this review make sure to toss it a like let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this if you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the brand new Masters of the Universe Masterverse Revelation Merman. And with all that said, I will see you next time.